This is the In Focus podcast from the Hindu. Hello and welcome to the Hindu's In Focus podcast. I am Nivedita, your host for today. It is safe to say that artificial intelligence isn't just a fantasy anymore. We are using AI more and more in our day-to-day life, be it on our phones or for work. This year, every smartphone manufacturer, be it Samsung, Apple, Google, Oppo, nothing, they are all placing their bets on this technology. They have announced plans to integrate generative AI in phones to provide a more personalized user experience. What does this mean? It is important to note that we have been using AI in our phones for quite a while already. We use it in various ways, for video stabilization, for image enhancement, for editing, as a personal assistant, for transcribing in various apps already. So, what's next? In this episode, I talk to Tarun Patak, Research Director at Counterpoint Technology Market Research to find out more about this. We take a look at how AI can personalize a phone experience, help in content creation, how the device hardware is keeping up and at what cost. We also examine its implication on privacy and security. Hello and welcome to the Hindus in Focus podcast, Tarun. Thank you. Thank you, Nivedita, for inviting me today. Okay, so Tarun, a whole lot of manufacturers, everybody from Apple to Oppo are looking to leverage the power of AI and are yeah. looking to ensure that AI can be the differentiator for them. So AI, yeah. as we know, is not new uh, in smartphones. It has been present right. for quite a while. So yeah. what are they offering now which is different? Yeah, interesting question. So um, as you rightly mentioned, like AI is not new, right? It has been around for almost like a decade now, right? And and some of the component players started work on it as early as 2013, right? Uh, so now why this is happening, there, there are two reasons to it. So one is your devices are now getting more powerful, right? So if you look at the devices of today, they come with like almost like eight gigabit of RAM, um, goes up to like 16 gigabit of RAM, something very similar to what PCs used to have a decade back. So your devices are getting more and more powerful. And now the dimensions of AI is also changing. So what was happening, AI was more like a you give a command, you give an input, and um, your desired output is out, right? Now, things are changing in, in that scene with respect to, um, if you look at the changes that have arrived um, overall in the tech ecosystem in the past six, seven years, it, it all changed very recently with the open AI chat GPT. What different that uh, did is now uh, whatever uh, input that is gained, the model is trained on certain set of databases and it is giving you an original content. It's something which is very different, right? Today you can just say, hey, can you create me an image with a very hypothetical example in your mind, which you can't find it anywhere. It will create in a matter of seconds. And now what it is being leveraged right now is certain set of processing capabilities. You have earlier CPUs and then GPUs. Now we have NPUs, right? So so the point is your devices are getting powerful. You have these um, models that have become mature. Uh, they are trained on the large data sets that are coming. And hence, now we are entering into an era where phones will be customized as per our needs and preferences. So for example, a smartphone that you are currently using in two years from now, uh, it will actually analyze, okay, what Nivedita does on day-to-day activities on her phone, and it will align everything so perfectly, the data on your phone, that you might no longer do a certain set of tasks that you do in 10 or different steps. It will just do it in one step, like using maybe voice as an input mechanism. So the short answer is the devices are getting powerful. You have these multi-models, LLM, large language models coming into picture, which are trained on huge data sets and hence everything is coming together. And now you can see this entire buzzword of AI and its meaning is changing in a big way in the tech world. So you're saying that it's going to be a transformative um, 
you're saying that it's going to be a transformative journey and we are on a transformative yeah. journey so what right. are the cool things that we can expect and where are we now to what we can achieve correct so basically if you look at uh, it it all depends on use cases right um, and if you look at right now uh, the use cases are largely very similar ac- across OEMs what they are doing it is uh, about like something like summarizing and rewriting documents uh, generating images translate conversations in real time uh, like things like blurring your pictures changing editing a bit um, so it's it's more from content creation point of view uh, very early days but going forward uh, we believe uh, there will be more use cases that are going to emerge out of this um, and and those use cases can range from completely changing the way you interact with your apps developers will be at the center like for example let's say i have an app away from where i order my food right uh, instead of going into that app and picking up one particular dish i can just say hey can you order me my favorite dish on that particular app uh, which i ordered let's say in the past 10 days or something it will immediately go access order it for me right so so the point is most of these capabilities the apps that will be transformative and the use cases will be very very different although still and 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 again the use cases i talk like you have this entire documents um, that can be now analyzed in a matter of seconds right earlier uh, we have this take for example accepting the privacy uh, like um, conditions of any particular app I'm sure like 99.9% of, of us have never read those, right? Now, maybe going forward, it will just summarize for you. Here are the three things that might matter for you. So things will be more easier going forward. Things will be more personalized. So that, like I said, your entire phone will be personalized as per your own needs and preferences. And as a result of it, what will happen, the same experience, let's say I'm having from my iPhone 15 Pro, or Pro Max will be very different from the same experience another user will be having it because the Apple intelligence on the device uh, is helping that user navigating through day-to-day tasks as per their preferences. Um, so, so that way, I think things are likely to change. It's still very early days. I think everything, uh, Chat GPT started way back in early uh, 2020, 2021. Gen AI actually started with the launch of, you can say, Galaxy S24 with the multimodal capabilities and the uh, large language models uh, that, that are helping them to uh, drive these use cases, what we are seeing today. So, uh, to me, there are two important things that you spoke about. The first is the privacy concern, which I think we will talk a little bit more in detail later in this podcast. Yeah. But first, you mentioned about specific um, various uh, things that you're finding in specific phones so is there any difference between you know higher end phones and uh, lower end phones is that is that the differentiation between uh, in the phones is that is that what's going to make uh, how ai is going to be used different in different phones yes so let let me explain it like so the entire experience will be fundamental fundamentally based on three or four different things so first the models on which these uh, parameters are trained right so obviously the input is as um, the output is as good as the input right so first of all like samsung may be uh, using a different llm and apple they mentioned that they are using an llm which is smaller so this uh, approach is a bit differently so for example the other thing what is happening is how these models are um, these these experiences are shaping on device or it is on the cloud like this use cases so let's say for example apple's ai model is mostly on your device so what apple is saying um, they are saying it's not about a uh, one big model our strategy is more likely a blend of smaller models that do not require the same amount of computing power or memory uh, that that a big model requires but it is perfect enough to get the job done right so Think of it as like smaller models that are being used for dedicated tasks. But some of the OEMs will say, okay, I'll use one big model, one small model. 
dedicated for certain tasks and then the experience on those will be a bit different and then there is a third criteria of where devices device makers will say hey i want a use on device what i'll do is i can do the entire thing from the cloud right so for example um, for example uh, circle to search right it can be done through cloud like samsung is leveraging the uh, browsing assist right uh, but some of things are happening on device like for example your call assist live translation that is happening on the device so for example uh, any other things like images processing everything uh, stable diffusion on the device so it all depends like how oems are blending or taking different approach different strategies to but but the output and the use cases are likely very similar like i mentioned uh, as of now translation circle to search assist um, magic wand what uh, apple says and google magic erasers uh, you can edit your pictures but going forward like more and more developers come comes in and they adopt this uh, apis uh develop their apps on top and the use cases will also emerge so i think uh, you can say like the, these are the three broad parameters on which the devices will be differentiated uh, going forward so another issue where devices will be differentiated is the hardware they use so what is the difference exactly. in the hardware uh, which for all ai phones and the phones that we have presently which we don't have so they need larger batteries they need more processing yes. uh, uh they need a better processing power so uh, these are expensive right so they make your yeah. phones more expensive right so is exactly uh, hardware keeping with the tech uh, with the technology and yeah. how how are manufacturers dealing with the expenses that is going to come yeah uh, it's it's an excellent question a very good point so so what we are looking at right now 90% of this generative ai smartphones are premium when when we say premium it's more than 600 dollars and above right um if you look at the chipsets that are driving it snapdragon 8 gen 3 these are like top of the mediatek dimensity 9300 they're like top and premium phone so more or less even apple mentioned it will start on the pro series 15 pro max they didn't do 8 for 14 or 13 because of the hardware limitations even when google announced that pixel 8 uh, restriction due to hardware so hardware plays a big impo- uh, bigger role on this so what we are saying is there will be certain hardware requirements for those like for example a minimum 8 gigabit of dram uh, for these models to run smoothly on the device so at least uh, a depiction of like let's say translation of a uh, 10 tokens per second which is an average speed of a normal human um, in terms of read and write um, and then at the same time uh, we need to have socs that are very very powerful um, almost similar like the flagships um and then uh, we need to have a dedicated uh, npu like neural processing unit on 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 that so these are like some of the hardware classification but then there is an alternative view point to it the point is like in future whether there will be enough innovations to make sure that a bigger llm uh, will be running on a smaller memory so maybe uh, and that's that that way your hardware uh, criteria will get lower so counterpoint is not defining generative ai phone on any hardware limitation we we believe it will be more like care for an experience although you need a basic premiumization of features uh, used to run these models technically you can run everything on the cloud as well uh, a 200 dollar device can bring in ai and say some of these features are happening but then there's a lag right you are sending it cloud coming back and then um, there's certain level of latency to it and then there's a bigger issue of privacy to it um if everything is happening on the device um things are more secure uh, because it's happening on the device your data is not going out but at the same time you are saving tons of this um uh, like for example storage um uh, as well from the cloud and 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 those so there are different viewpoints to it it's still a very early um, stage of evolution of this segment but we believe everyone is talking about it and we already have like counterpoint did it like we are estimating almost like 17% of the phones by end of this year will be like gen ai enabled and by 2027 it will be almost like 45 to 50% of the smartphones will be generative ai but 
coming back to your point on how much of the cost it is going to add because you need a latest processor you need a high bandwidth memory so we believe that the cost of the comp uh, like for example uh, net revenue increase from gen ai smartphones from now to 2023 it will be almost like a 15x right um, so that's the kind of revenue uptake we are estimating Just to clarify, you said from now to twenty twenty three. What is the time period? Uh, twenty twenty four to twenty thirty. Okay, uh, thank you so years. much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so till then, are we seeing like would we see uh, phone producers, not manufacturers? They will they like say Apple or Google? Will they uh, come get, come up with different kind of solutions to ensure the costs are cheaper, like say a subscription model or something? Yes. So, so there could be two things. So, you look into the hardware point of things. So, you know, okay, chipset and memories. There are two pillars to it, right? To make sure, like one, you need a processing. The other thing is on the memory, right? So, you invest more on these component um, uh, sourcing. Uh, you deploy, make sure high components, uh, high value components are there. But then you uh, trade off on other components, maybe a bit on battery to save cost, a bit on display. Uh, that's a trade off one can look for, or you can look for um uh, this incremental update on your um uh, components uh, that are going additionally uh, you can uh, look for subscription as a model uh, like hey this is a generative ai happening on the device this is good but if you need to go for a more advanced one you get more uh, like uh, faster output uh, even wide range of use case let's go for a advanced one Let's say, let's uh, let's take for example Google has uh, during this Google I/O they have mentioned Gemini Advanced, right? Um, that will be rolled out in twenty dollar if I'm not sure um, that package. Um, so so similar thing can happen, but again, Gen AI as a service uh, is a very tricky thing unless and until users find good use cases, um, they find it very difficult to upgrade, right? It, it's similar like what what Open AI is doing. Okay, you have the basic. that gives you information only till 2021 and then if you need more you need to upgrade same thing what microsoft is doing on the pc side of things copilot uh, thing uh, you need to have copilot to get access to the other larger information or something like that so will the model be uh, viable for everyone then is that a big concern is the concern in a sense like because again uh, let's say because not everyone is playing in the premium space you have like only 7 or 10 oems but then you have larger 150 oems that are in the entry to mid tier smartphones so what will they do right so the answer is uh, it will be a mix of a strategy uh, they will again like I, i say they'll go hybrid some of these native ai applications will largely run out in cloud and some on the device or other things there will be very specific ai use cases as well not everything will be generative not everything will require large models to give you the desired output there will there will be very smaller ai based applications as well especially on the camera right um, maybe on the camera you need to point and shoot but you need the best settings right so that doesn't need a larger model to make your settings so that can be done with a normal ai uh, fine t- tuning of your pictures or even saving your memory while reducing the multiple um, like segment stores on on your device that doesn't require high uh, level so again uh, i believe it is going to be very confusing segment as well going forward because um, no no one is saying gen ai versus ai everyone is saying ai right even a 100 dollar phone you will see in next 6 to 7 months will say oh i have an ai as well but for consumers how does it impact and how does it uh, matter whether it is running on the device cloud or it is um, powerful or not they, they, they for them the use case matter a lot for them um, they also need to check hey if i am putting a search or voice as an input mechanism to get a desired output whether this model is giving me a right uh, output or not if that doesn't align with the user expectations then again uh, the the use case and that uptick can be even lower than everyone is anticipating at this point so it all depends on how these oems are giving the experience to the consumers going forward 
So a major part of that experience is the privacy which you were talking about earlier. So yeah. the privacy will change as according to where the data is stored or where it is used, like right. you were saying, on the device, on right. cloud, or on other a- aspects. So how are manufacturers right. and uh, for, uh, manufacturers addressing these concerns? So again, uh, from the privacy perspective, you are saying. Yeah, how are how are manufacturers addressing these privacy concerns for the various types of privacy concerns that happen? You listed a couple of them yourself just now. Yeah. So again, for like Apple said, okay, everything is on the cloud. We'll have our native private cloud compute uh, that will be more secure. Um, but if you are using Chat GPT, you need to give a permission, and you'll get a pop up like, hey, your data is going out or something like. So one is to make consumers. First of all, the biggest thing is. These OEMs should make consumers aware of what is going out and what is being stored on the device. I think that is very, very important. The second thing is the output that is being generated. Uh, things should be very clear, like this is a Gen AI generated content. This is something that is generated because a, a lot of these copyright issues, everything will start coming up, right? So I'm sure like these regulations and privacy holders, they're keeping a very closer eye on it. I think we have this a DMA, if I'm not wrong, in Europe that is also looking to say um, how to safeguard the data privacy in a GNA-driven future, right? Uh, so so the point is, first of all, you need to make, make consumers aware what exactly is this, like Apple mentioned, right? So I think Samsung is doing a good job on that as well, um, highlighting those privacy concerns. The other thing is the, the proper regulations. Um, this adoption has... Uh, accelerated very fast no one saw it coming three years back right now i think the organizations need to look into and and it will be a countrywide phenomenon like india might have a very different gen ai policies the ai related policy as compared to what europe is same but the underlying foundation should be very similar let let users aware and let everyone be aware of the what kind of content it doesn't infringe copyright it doesn't uh, impact uh, any like let's say advertisers in a big way so because the impact can be the only purpose of this should be empowered users to become more productive to become uh, to get maximum from their devices so i think those policies and regulations will be drafted very soon since this adoption curve is uh, faster and we might hear the first or couple of drops coming in. I think there was a debate in um, uh, in US as well where different Senate had these closed door meetings on regulating the AI. So uh, very soon you'll see this AI being regulated across the globe uh, in, in coming years uh, or so. Finally, I'd like to ask you once, uh, I'd like to ask you, can AI revolutionize how we are using our smart devices like how touchscreen perhaps changed yeah. how phones are made right right it, it can again like i said as of now the use cases are very basic um, the consumer um, uh, are not really warming up to this idea but the mind share has been really really high like okay there's something like ai is there so it all depends on use cases but very important point is there has been always this innovation that has been happening on the device almost every decade. Uh, and and what is happening is it, it changes with the input mechanism, right? Um, earlier in 1990s, 2000, we had this uh, bar phones, right? Um, and then it changed to QWERTY with the BlackBerry. And then iPhone came and re- revolutionized everything with the touch form factor. So it all it's all about input mechanism. But now... Can this input mechanism be changed to voice only rather than just touch, right? And like what human AI demonstrated during MWC. Uh, but again, very early days, uh, I think whenever there is a change in input mechanism, there is a fundamental change in the devices as well. So could be. Uh, and, and and for that, this AI needs to be really, really powerful to understand the users in a, in a much smarter way, which is, it is doing already, but the, we also believe these models will evolve uh, very significantly over the next two or three days. There's a massive amount of data that is going uh, on which they are being trained. Um, massive resources out there if it is happening on the cloud processing because you need tons of this electricity to power, right? Those data centers and everything. Um, so the industry and the world needs to have a very closer eye on are we like... Uh, consuming more right in this era of uh, like um, 
uh, we 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 are having this the entire change in weather and everything right so so it's a very tricky question uh, we need to make sure these technologies are sustainable as well and environment friendly as well uh, someone was telling me like if you need to run a data center or running those high performance machines it was costing them almost the electricity of the entire town uh, just for a few hours to run certain models so so the point is again uh, i think global warming is real as well so it all connects basically um, and we need to make sure if this technology ramps up it's, it's also a sustainable ai uh, rather than just a generative ai okay thank you so much tarun for joining us today thanks thanks for the absolute pleasure to be here thanks in focus will be back soon with analysis of the biggest news issues In the meantime, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher and other platforms. Just search for In Focus by the Hindu. We'll see you soon.